Guys, we've got the brand new Red Cat Valkyrie monster truck on the bench today. And if this thing turns out to be any good, this could be the best value in large one tenth scale bashing you can get right now. This thing has a really nice body on it and some classic lines to it that you don't really see on most monster trucks these days. Unlike a lot of new trucks that we've been seeing lately, this body's held on by four body clips. These body clips do feel nice and strong. They don't have body clip retainers, which I'm a little bit disappointed to see, but they could always be added. This does have a nice thick cage, some roof rails, reinforcement for the body clips in the front and rear, and a bit of an internal cage as well on a body that feels medium thick, though with all this structure, it should be pretty strong. However, it's underneath this body where things are really interesting because this might look pretty familiar to you. This is very similar to the WAV racing vehicles, and it is definitely made in the same factory as those trucks. However, there are a lot of differences. This being based off the same platform as the WAV racing truck is actually a good thing because that's a a really tough truck and if they've improved some of the weak points of that truck while keeping all of the durability and fun this thing could be a massive deal especially given the fact that it's half the price of the Traxxas Max after tax. Unlike the WAV racing truck this has a Hobbywing ESC in it. This is an unbranded ESC but it's definitely a Hobbywing Max 10 SCT. It's slightly dumbed down with their cheaper switch but other than that this should be the standard Max 10 SCT and I've heard all the programming is left intact with it which is really nice. Next to that is a nice big looking motor with a fan and heat sink on it. That motor is going to be putting power down through a center drive shaft that's made from aluminum and definitely has a different design from the WAV Racing, which is a great thing because that WAV Racing design was kind of a pain to put together. This has plastic big bore threaded body shocks with shock shaft protectors, plastic upper and lower arms, plastic universals. We'll be taking a closer look at those soon as well. A nice tall dirt guard that hopefully will keep debris out of the inside of the truck. We've also got an adjustable mount for the battery tray, a really nice aluminum center tower to tower brace, and a pretty interesting steering system that we'll be taking a closer look at too. We're also going to have to take a look at the electronics under the ESC because if this is like the WAV Racing, there might be some limitations down here that we're not going to like. But as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to dislike about this chassis. It's a nice, thick, durable plastic chassis. And even though the hinge pins are not captured in metal, this should be plenty strong enough, though we're going to find out when we bash this thing. Lengthwise, it's longer than a standard 110 scale and closer to the size of a V2 Max, but widthwise, it's basically the same width as a standard 110 scale. And that's actually going to be a limitation to that shared platform with the WAV Racing. The WAV Racing monster truck uses really wide tires to get that wider stance, which we might try out on this truck in a future video. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. We've got 17 millimeter hexes on this 4S truck, and these wheels look very similar to the Red Cat Vigilante. And whereas these look like standard 17 millimeter hexes underneath, this setup's a little bit different from what you would normally expect. And this could be a limitation depending on what you're trying to do with this truck. We've got thread lock on this screw, which is nice to see. It wasn't too bad, but it was plenty enough to keep it secure. But if we take off this hex, you can see that this stub shaft is not what you'd expect from a normal RC car. This is a spline shaft. And unfortunately that means you're not gonna be putting any kind of regular 17 millimeter hex extender on here. Maybe Red Cat will come out with something or possibly the aftermarket will step up and allow us to make this truck a little bit wider. The hex nut is serrated. And as you can see, it took most of the chrome off the inside of this wheel, which is expected. These tires are new for Red Cat. However, they definitely are not a new design. This looks almost identical to the most modern Proline Badlands. They are vented on the outside and they're pretty lightweight. These tires are about 130 millimeters in diameter and around 60 millimeters wide. While I'm getting the rest of these tires off, it's a great time to go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. We do ultimate teardowns on all new vehicles and you're not gonna see that anywhere else. Removing this center brace, we can see this is a solid bar of aluminum. This definitely isn't going to get bent in normal bashing. However, it only prevents the chassis from flexing this way, not this way, because it's not positively retained on the ends. These guards are actually held on with more screws than I thought, but they will fold out of the way. So let's see if we can get this cover off without taking them completely off. One interesting thing about this design is that the entire motor mount is held in with just this one screw. Unfortunately, we can't quite get the motor out because it's running into the ESC. It definitely looks like it is going to be as difficult to get into these differentials as it is on the WAV Racing. First thing we need to do is take the shocks off, so let's take a look at one of those. These shocks are all plastic, though they have been pretty durable on the WAV Racing truck, with one big exception, which I want to verify we don't have here, and that would be that this lower eye originally was just pressed on. WAV Racing has since updated the design to a standard thread-on kind. Let's make sure this thread's on as well. Oh man, guys, this is very disappointing. These shocks have that same 
clip-on defective design that originally came on the WAV racing trucks, which means unless they updated the design, these shocks are probably going to end up breaking. That's pretty disappointing to see and probably something Red Cat's going to have to scramble to fix just like WAV racing did. However, taking a look inside, we can see we've got a fairly standard bladder style shock. Well, with that disappointment out of the way, let's see what the rest of the truck looks like. And now this whole top part should lift off pretty similar to a 3S Arma. So the rear differential comes out pretty easily, but this center differential is actually fairly hard to remove. And that's because unlike on the WAV Racing version that actually has a sleeve on this center drive shaft, it's directly connected to the center differential here, which means you kind of have to bend the center drive shaft up to get this out. It is doable, and that sleeve is kind of a pain. So I'm not entirely sure which design is better, but as you can see here, we have an aluminum tube style center drive shaft. And we're gonna take a closer look at this power module in just a minute. But before we do that, let's see if anything's different with this rear differential. Now it may be hard to see the scale of this, but this rear differential is actually massive, and this is easily the same size as a differential out of a 6S truck, maybe even bigger than that, which is really good because it takes a lot of screws to get that differential out of there. These plastic drive shafts do look nice and beefy and should even hold up to 6S. Speaking of which, let me know down in the comments if you want to see me run 6S on this truck. Now, in order to get these drive shafts off, they're a little bit different than on the WAV Racing. It looks like we might have a grub screw in here. And that grub screw is the beloved 50 thousandths, so make sure you have a 50 thousandths bit. And unfortunately, that grub screw is stripping. Let me try this other side. Okay, with a little bit of heat, we are able to get this grub screw out. So definitely use heat before you take these out because I don't know what I'm gonna do about the one I stripped on this side. I'm still not sure how this is supposed to come apart. Okay, guys, I figured it out. That grub screw holds this cross pin in, and with a little bit of struggling because it's also thread locked because of the thread lock on the grub screw, you can take that out, and then we can take this off, and we can finally access the screw to get that stub axle out. Now, I understand that the C-clip on the wall of racing axles was a little bit of a pain, but I'm not sure this is any better. And like I said, unfortunately, because I stripped this one out, I can't even get this one out of here. That being said, we can get a look at the size of this. It is absolutely massive. This does actually look updated from the wall of racing one. I think they've added some more beef in here. We do have two sealed bearings holding the pinion in. Let's go ahead and take this ring gear off and see what it looks like inside. By the way, if you'd like to see a full teardown comparison between this and the WAV Racing, let me know down in the comments. Inside here, we have some nice, big, beefy, centered steel gears and just a little bit of fluid. Let's take a quick look under the hood of the power module and see if there's anything different here. Pulling this off, we can see we've got a nice, big, beefy, centered steel spur gear with an aluminum and steel center differential. This looks very strong and it's got nice thick fluid in it. I'm not gonna pull this apart because I don't think I need to put any thicker fluid in there. And this is that single bolt assembly motor mount I was talking about. I haven't had any problems with this, so it should hold up just fine in this car as well. We do have a bit of adjustment on two sliding bolts here, as well as one sliding bolt on the bottom. Because there's no access to this screw from the bottom, you're either gonna have to do all of this to get this out, or you'll have to take the receiver box off so it can slide back far enough to be able to adjust this. So if you're gonna be setting mesh, you're probably gonna need this in the module anyway. Way. Speaking of which, there's a single idler gear between the pinion gear and the center differential. This motor is Red Cat branded and is a 3670-1950 kV motor, which is pretty low for 4S, but just right for 6S. And we can actually see they've used heat sink compound on this heat sink. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that from an OEM manufacturer. That heat sink compound will fill microscopic gaps between the heat sink and the motor casing, and that increased surface area will result in increased heat transfer that can then be whisked away by this fan. Okay, guys, I'm gonna put all this together. Then we need to take a closer look at the receiver box because this is not advertised as waterproof and I suspect it's this receiver box that's causing it not to be. The front end of this is a fairly traditional setup with kingpins for steering and everything is captured in double shear, which just means that there's support on both sides of these joints. This is definitely stronger than a single shear setup and is really nice to see. And as opposed to your normal steering system, this has a link that goes to a sliding piece that interacts with these tie rods. This is a fairly robust system, but there is some concern about wear over time as there aren't any bearings in here. It's just sliding in the chassis itself. And you can see here that the servo is mounted to the bottom of the ESC mount. This is a standard size servo. However, on the WAV Racing, it was a 23 tooth servo saver. And this servo saver is proprietary to this chassis. Let's see if they switch to a 25 tooth on this one. So yes, fortunately, this is a standard 25 tooth servo, which means you can upgrade this to whatever servo you want, which is a really nice change from the WAV Racing. And this servo saver looks pretty decent, whereas it's not adjustable. It does have metal inside and is actually pretty well sealed up, so it shouldn't get jammed up with dust and dirt too easily. You can see here we've got a receiver box that has a place for a gasket, but no gasket in it. 
And this is a fairly generic looking four channel receiver. That receiver is controlled by this RXT 4C transmitter. This is the first time I've seen this transmitter from Red Cat. And this is actually a pretty good step up from their old transmitters. It's got nice soft touch in the grip, an angled foam covered wheel, and all the basic trims and settings you'd expect from an RTR transmitter. As you can see here, the wires just go through a hole in the top of the receiver box, which means there's not really any way to make this waterproof. And if water does get in there because it's mounted right to the chassis, it's probably gonna sit in there, which isn't the greatest thing in the world. If you're gonna be running in water, I definitely recommend waterproofing your receiver. I've shown how to do that in a couple of previous videos. You might wanna check those out if you're interested. This servo is labeled as waterproof. Let's make sure that it actually is. I can already see a nice little red gasket poking through there on the bottom, which means that this thing probably is waterproof. And yes, we do have O-rings on the screws as well. Pulling this cover off, we can see we just have a loose board floating around in here, which isn't the best. And it doesn't have any conformal coating on it, so it is definitely relying on these seals to keep it waterproof, which is fine. This does look like a fairly large motor, so it should be reasonably powerful, though. We'll just have to wait and find out. Pulling the cap off, we can see we've got mostly brass gears in here, a ball bearing in the top, and a little brass bushing, which is nice to see. Overall, I'd say it's not terrible for an RTR servo. The waterproofing does look comprehensive, and the gears look fairly decent. Though, of course, being brass, they're not going to be nearly as strong as steel gears would be. Whether or not this will be strong enough for this car, we'll just have to wait and see. Last thing I want to do before I finish putting this thing back together and take it out is take a look at this battery tray. This is a big 6,500 milliamp hour SMC battery, and it's already going to fit in here without adjusting this slide, which means you've got plenty of room for bigger batteries in here. Let me finish putting this back together. Let's go see what this thing can do. Guys, let's see how fast she is off-road. <laughs> Definitely feels powerful. Not easy to control though, woo, full speed. Quite a bit of ballooning. Not too bad though, one more pass. All right, that was full throttle, whoop. Well, she's upside down, but let's see how fast she went. 42 miles an hour, that's actually pretty good off-road. I'm sure it'll do a little bit more on-road. Let's see how she handles some bashing. <laughs> take a look at the Red Cat, it occurred to me that some of you might not know about the design flaw on the original WAV Racing shocks. The problem is that instead of being screwed together, they just have a little groove in the bottom of the shock shaft and then a little tab inside the hole here that snaps into it. If the shock gets topped out, this gets pulled out and there's nothing you can do about it. Once this happens, it's junk. The Red Cat shocks appear to be designed exactly the same. I checked when I released my original video where I found this problem and it was over five months ago, so I think they should have had time to update the design on the Red Cat shocks, especially since they've already updated it on these shocks. So what do I think about the Red Cat Valkyrie after the first couple of packs? Well, first of all, I need to let you know that I'm not running the original ESC in here. Unfortunately, my original Max 10 SCT was DOA. That's not really the fault of the truck though. And this will be a great opportunity for us to see how the customer support works. Overall, the truck has held up pretty decently well. I will say that the servo is absolute junk. You need to replace it right away. It's way too slow and weak for this platform. These tires are really good and they should be because they're basically Proline Badlands. The chassis has held up fine as have the arms and the shocks so far, but I haven't had the kind of crash that I would expect to cause them to fail. Let me know if you want to see me do that on purpose in the next video. The body has definitely taken some damage. We've got some big dings back here in the back. 
and in the front where the shock towers are trying to punch through, and that's after only a couple of packs of fairly medium bashing. But overall, for $300, other than those shocks, I'm pretty happy with this truck. It's a pretty decently durable platform, handles okay, it's a little bit narrow, so it does like to traction roll a little more than I'd like. We'll try to fix that in the next video, too. Has a decent amount of power, and I expect it would have a decent amount of power on the original ESC as well. This Max 10 SCT is a known quantity, and it's a good ESC. Overall, though, at this time, I'd have a hard time recommending recommending this just because of those shocks. Maybe they won't be a problem in this platform, but they were a big problem in the WAV racing vehicles. And I suspect, given that it's almost certainly the same design, it's going to be a problem in this truck as well. These shocks are not the same length as the WAV racing shocks, so you can't just swap them out. I checked Max shocks, and they're a little bit longer, so I don't think they're going to work. So until we figure out what kind of shocks will work on this, there's a good chance if you land upside down, smack one of these corners, that you're going to end up popping a rod off a shock, and then there's nothing you can do about it other than buy a new shock. It'll be interesting to see if Red Cat notices this, how they respond if they do. They have been very, very good at coming up with solutions to these kinds of problems before. The Machete had a design flaw. They went out and fixed it right away. Whether or not they'll see this as a design flaw, I'm not sure. We'll just have to see what happens. If I hear anything from them, I'll definitely let you know. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching. Check out one of these videos.